Hey everyone, today I want to show you guys one of my absolute favorite chord shapes. And this one is a little bit of a complex one because we can look at it in two different ways. We could see it either as a Lydian chord, or sus2 chord with a sharp 11, or as a dominant chord with an 11th. So in this video, we'll focus on the Lydian sound, treating it as a sus2 with a sharp 11, but I'll also explain the dominant chord idea at the end. Anyways, let's start with some voicings on the A string. And I want to start with this one here. Again, this is C sus2 with a sharp 11, but I want to start with this voicing in particular because this is probably the easiest one that you will play because we have this open G string here. So if we play this built off another part of the neck, we have quite a stretch as you can see. So if I build it off of D, it's going to look like that, which is going to be really hard to play. So we'll play it like this here. To make it easier for yourself, you could also try it with a capo. So if I have a capo, then I can play the same voicing uh, with that open position chord right there. Anyways, I also want to look at some inversions. So if we put the D in the bass, we have this sound here. So I use this one all the time as well. Uh, just such a beautiful kind of whimsical chord. We put the F sharp in the bass with a sharp 11. We have this really nice sound here. This one's a really good one to demonstrate how the chord is built because as we can see here, if we take the bass note off, we have a sus2 sound. And then we just add the sharp 11 in the bass, which gives it that bit of rich emotional complexity. And the last voicing, or inversion, not my favorite, is this one here over G. Now let's take a look at some voicings on the E string. So these get a little bit harder to play. So the first one, this is our root position form, our inversion with D in the bass. Put F sharp in the bass and play it all the way up here. Or if you want, you can bring that all the way down here. Play with some open notes. And then with the fifth in the bass, we have that. Now turning to the D string, again, looking at the inversions, our first shape starts like this, if I can get it here. So that's the root position form. Really pretty, actually, when played uh, on the top four strings. The inversion with the D in the bass sounds like that. Again, one that I use all the time. And then if we put the F sharp in the bass, we have that, and finally, our fifth in the bass version, one that honestly I don't use all the time. So anyways, that is C sus2 with a sharp 11, uh, and all its inversions based off the A, E, and the D string. Now let me explain this chord as a dominant sound. So if we take a look at this example here, this would have been our inversion with the D in the bass. We can treat this as a root position chord here. So if we take a look at the structure of this sound, we have a D. C, F sharp, which gives us a D dominant shell voicing. And then we have A here, which is the 11th. So I could also just treat this chord as a dominant 11 chord. In this case, this is a D dominant 11. So if we look at all of the other shapes or inversions relative to this one, we could also treat these as inversions of a D dominant chord instead. So for example, this sound here, with the F sharp in the bass, this could just be a D11 over F sharp, or our original chord here could be the D dominant 11, but with a C in the bass as well. So if we want to treat it in that kind of way, we can listen to how well it resolves to G. It's a really nice resolute sound there, basically going from five to one, if I treat it in that view as well. So anyways, I hope you guys have fun learning and exploring this chord here. Try it as a Lydian sound. Try it as a dominant sound. See which way you like to use it. Maybe use it for both. Anyways, catch you guys in the next video.